All right, click the links to join the channel here over at Subscribe Star. Someone on social media will say, as a woman, I feel, and then everyone in the comments is like, yeah, we, we know. That's why you're saying the things you're saying. We're um, H&K, Bud, Bud Budweiser, and um, Coors Molson, who owns Miller, are all, um, H&K is a Liberty device. It's like a high-end Liberty device thing. They're all coming out in support of various things. And the H&K girl, who later deleted her tweets, and who herself was a, a bikini model <laughs> um, and is now a wine mom with cats and, a, and an auntie, is coming out for like all this kind of feminist stuff. And, and people are looking at these brands and like, just shut the fuck up, brand. Silence brand. Can you just stop these people? They deleted their tweets. Like, why did you have a, you had an ex-bikini model who's at H&K who's, who's, who's talking about feminism or something and, and talking about objectification of women and then people are pointing out her old pictures of her being a bikini model. It's the same thing with that, uh, the Miller Lite um, woman who's the uh, the unattractive comedian with the giant, giant milkers. I tried to do a video for that, but it's just, it's just, some things are just almost impossible to do on YouTube. Anyway, so do women ruin gaming? Sony has a woman moment i'm gonna have to get a computer so i can edit this stuff out a little bit easier so let's look at all this kind of stuff without uh without the political correctness associated with it you got something that's made for males games comics a genre of movies it, like some things i was thinking about pocket knives why do guys like pocket knives from everything from the swiss army knife with all the attachments to it like in a corkscrews and, and little saw blades and stuff like you never know i might need it um as it turns out oh yeah a corkscrew it comes in handy because there's kind of no substitute opening a bottle of wine uh, um no not all wine comes in boxes it used to come with, with corks or everything from buck knives to just simple folding knives like why do guys like knives they start building up collections it's, i don't know it's just it's just something hardwired into the brain so like oh no we need to market we need to market these buck knives to women it's like you just you're just peeing in the wind. There's no point in doing this kind of stuff. Anyway, um, Liberty devices, yeah, you can market those to women. They have like pink highlights and titanium frames to make things ultra light. Yeah, for sure. Smith and Wesson or Lady Smith and Wesson. Yeah, absolutely. But um, knives, not so much. And I remember Girl's Best Friend is Smith and Wesson. So um, you got games and, and all this kind of like genres of movies that are made for men. They are, it's a male audience. Sales are good. All you have to do is just not screw it up. And you look at them and they look at you like, sir, that that's asking the impossible. Just don't make it woke. How do you keep from messing up? Can you just not kill the goose? Um, we're going to kill the goose. But it lays the golden egg. We're going to kill the goose. And you look at them and you realize there's no talking to a lot of these. You don't understand. If we kill the goose, yes. I don't know what happens after that, but we're going to kill the goose. Like, okay, I, I don't know what to say to a lot of these people. It's conservative asks why a wall is in place before they tear it down. So um, how do you keep from messing this stuff up? Well, you just don't change the vibe of who got it there. If a bunch of guys in a basement or a warehouse made these games or comics or whatever, and they tell stories in a certain way, that is your lightning in a bottle. I always think of the original Star Wars, and I'm not even the biggest Star Wars fan, but I look at the actors, the half dozen primary actors in the, the original Star Wars trilogy, and they say, I'm going to go, oh, this lightning in a bottle. Like, you're never going to come close to that. You're never going to replicate that for sure. So what's the next best thing? Come as close to it as possible. The Lord of the Rings, the four books of the Lord of the Rings. I mean, yeah, I know if you're super fans, you're cringing when I say that. The Silmarillion, you troglodyte. Um, the books, you go, oh, hey, Peter Jackson, uh, our goal is to come as close as possible, and we did a pretty solid job, you know, with the constraints in movies. Yeah, yeah. So what happens in modern day when they remake, when they made The Hobbit or they make in Disney Star Wars? Oh, we just changed everything about it that you loved. It's like, why would you do that? Because we're cultural Bolsheviks, you idiot. We have been the whole time. Why did the scorpion, the scorpion stings the frog? And it's like, why'd you do that, lol? Because it's it's the nature of these freaking vermin parasites. Anyway, um... So, no, you're not going to capture light in a bottle. You just you just try not to kill the golden goose. Be honest about the vibe. If stuff isn't good or bad. It just is what it is. You got five guys in a garage who's making comics. That's the wave. Just keep surfing it. All you have to do is not get woke. Because woke isn't what got your audience in the first place. And when they use words like, uh, there's a bunch of articles on Bounty of Comics today. Actually, I'm trying to squeeze out a few videos, and they're all they're all bad news. If you're if you're looking at anything on the horizon, I go, oh yeah, it's gonna suck. You're like, what are you talking about? You don't even know that. It goes, is it a movie? Yeah, then 99% of them sucks. Is it a video game? Maybe 90% of those are gonna be woke. I mean, you're just playing the prank with comics. 
unless it's unless it's a an independent comics from you know comics gate or some other independent creator um it's 100 percent of comics are going to be are going to be you know cultural bolshevik nonsense just did Saul Alinsky write this it's like basically it's a couple step removed from the frankfurt school and critical theory but yeah that's basically what comics are about um Anyway, when they say stuff like reimagining or freshening things up for a modern, diverse audience, then they, they're going to F it in the A. They're just going to F it to death. It's sort of a weird lack of respect for men, I think, or for the people who were originally involved in something, whatever it was, because these filthy globalist parasites think people are fungible. If five English guys did something, then be specific to accept the reality that five English guys were in your garage and they put together this comic book or piece of software or whatever because everything that went into the product was because of like all 15 billion years of the universe went into making these men in a garage making this story it it is the sum the totality of the sum of everything that goes into creative effort took 15 billion years to get there every every zig of a proton because of them, those five English guys in a garage. And the cultural Bolshevik crowd definitely does not accept... Oh, the comments are... Hold well, on, let me get to the comment section. So the cultural Bolshevik crowd definitely does not accept that. They literally think if you replace the people, the unique fingerprint that created something with different people, you'll get the same product. I mean, a child would look at that and go like, but that doesn't... None of that makes sense. None of that. Everyone knows, even, at the, even when you're about... You know, a child's age, you start realizing, like, yeah, everyone does things slightly different. Different friends of yours will do things in a different manner. You know that people are not replaceable. It's just that when they go through this, um, you know, the school of uh, Moses Mordecai Levy, they get so brainwashed into thinking these. They look at these theories, and, and I mean, some people do this on social media. They look at some some bizarre theory, and then they look at a video that's you know like literal the empirical evidence before their eyes, and go, "So do you trust?" Do you trust the media telling you who's trying to explain away this video or you trust the video that's before your eyes? Like, oh, I have to trust the media trying to explain away this theory. That, that's like, you need to be deprogrammed if you're that brainwashed. That, yeah, I always trust the media and the government. It's like, what happened to the left? What happened to the left? Well, 2011 um, happened to the left. Anyway, um, they fundamentally hate the uniqueness of people. If an Englishman or whatever creates something that nobody else in the world created it, Jules Verne is a bit different from H.G. Wells. They're similar but not fungible. One's a Frenchman, one's an Englishman. You know, basically, uh, Jules Verne, Arthur Conan Doyle, H.G. Wells, they all, they all had that kind of like lost world stories, which were fan friggin' tastic. Or um, Henry Ryder Hager was also in there too. If you take something and start replacing the people who made it, you're going to end up with something different. And with video games... You had a golden goose, or with comics, you had a golden goose, or with movies, like all the time, they have this goose, and they're like, we just can't leave West well enough alone. We have to tinker with it and destroy it. And like, and you're like it's like, why do you? Why? Because it's the scorpion. It's the nature of the scorpion. Their reasoning is some nonsense about diversity and opening up the audience. And I mean, it's you look at them and you go like, uh, was it Ledley, Leslie Headland or Alonzo? from at disney is talking about we're leaving money on the table if we don't have like this united colors of bennington approach to, ha to have different people in the movies you know like disney modern disney star wars where it's just a, a casting call from downtown la it's got all these different groups of people in it and you've got blt in the background so they can edit it out for china and you look at them and go like but are you retaining the old audience will you go seek in the new audience and you look at comic books as an analogy and you realize no they don't, they're not doing that so why are you repeating those mistakes because it's never, it was never about the business in the first place. This is a religion to them. Do you, you're getting new female gamers, yes. Are you retaining the old gamers? You know, really only time will tell with that kind of stuff. But I can, you know, you can look at the comic book industry. Like, did, did the new women in the industry, the customers, balance out the men that left it? No, absolutely not. Comics are not what they've been. And yes, yes, I know, touch grass and put your fingers inside a woman and go outside and yikes, just yikes, friendo and, and bad take guy um but they did destroy all these things because they replaced the men with woke women it's not just me saying that you can for comics you can go read that stuff it sucks donkey nuts now cultural bolshevism and critical theory is coming to game so everyone's going to be fat and brown and blt and whatever is current trendy of the day they're going to push that especially the t of the blt which is funny because you figure like the industry is behind the cultural i don't know winds of change the zephyrs the zeitgeist the cultural the front of the wave front part and the industry is behind that so the industry is kind of catching up pushing the t part of the blt and people are starting to pull back from the t part 
and it, they're starting to, you know, the TRA versus the turf war type of stuff. People are looking at the T, even the, 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 the gay community is looking at the T part and going, ah, this is like an anchor. It's probably time to cut it free. And people are finally cutting it free, but it's at the exact same time that the industry is trying to push it. There's an Archie comic. Archie is a fascinating comic history also that they've been, they've been just insanely, insanely anti-white for a long time now. Anyway, um, cat ladies get involved in something and soy boys again, but soy boys, you can kind of like, if you have one soy boy in a group, you can force him to stay on messaging, but cat ladies and soy boys teamed up. It's like, it's just beyond hope. And if you have an HR department, it's like, yeah, that's, you're, you're better off going back to a garage and, you know, and people peeing in the backyard and, and like making killer products than you are opening up and like suddenly we have a human resource department her her name is you know iron box it's like she's all skilled on feminist theory and and critical anti-white theory it's like yeah this is gonna you're just gonna kill the golden goose yeah why do why do we seem to repeat these mistakes over and over again because not enough people are standing up and 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 saying it's time to stop with the cultural bolshevism or even it's like time to start naming it you can't you can't solve a problem without starting to, to get familiarize yourself with the, the lexicon, the nomenclature, all the words that kind of describe what these, these filthy globalist parasites are. I'm getting off track here. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. See you guys on the next episode.